so we are live. Uh, hi, welcome. We're back uh, with uh, with the Holy Roller campaign. So, uh, if you're joining, welcome. Um, if you don't know where we're at in the story, it's okay because okay. neither either. do we. <laughs> uh, yeah, feel free to watch, catch up on the YouTube videos. Um, you only got 17 episodes; they're about two hours long, so you got plenty to do to keep you busy over the weekend. Yeah, well, three hour ones in there, but we don't count those. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, before we get uh, kicked off, uh, we'll go ahead and yeah, we'll roll for prayer. Uh, we'll see where we're at here. Uh, I am not I doing 14. it with a three. I have a fourteen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Son of a gun. Thirteen. I had a seven. Tilted die, so I had to re-roll. Understood. Uh, well, it sounds like Joffrey's gonna uh, get us kicked off here. So, Joffrey, take it away. All right. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this time again to be able to fellowship with fellow creatives. We ask that you would be with us all tonight as we reconvene with our previous campaign. We ask that you would be present. We ask that you would be glorified. Thank you for the creativity that we get to share with each other and in this game. We ask your blessing for this night. And for those who are joining, we ask blessings for them as well. Thank you again for this ability to fellowship with fellow creatives all this more we ask in your name amen amen all right so uh, we left back. off with uh muriel kind of like flipping her lid because she got the killing blow on uh the yeah. red dragon Quite honestly, Ooh. probably one of my favorite moments on video that we've gotten so far. Like, it is just, it's so much fun to go back and watch that because your face, um, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, uh, a face is worth ten thousand. Oh. And, and, and you nailed it. You, you definitely, I think, kind of, your face kind of encapsulated, I think, just the emotion from everybody so well. And it was so great. And, uh, man, that was such a, it was a fun fight to do. Uh, so the uh, so the very large adult red dragon uh, fell to uh, fell to the holy rollers and yes. you know shortly oh. after that we we cut that was a very long night uh, we're <laughs> gonna pick up right from there uh, hopefully Raja and Lara will be joining us this evening if they do um, you know we'll get uh, we'll get everything flipped back over and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, uh, with that, the group still kind of lay, is recovering kind of within this large antechamber uh, of this temple. Um, most of you are still fairly scattered uh, up the stairs of this central um, shrine-ish area. The dragon now lays dead, lifeless, at the kind of the bottom of the stairs that lay north of the uh, shrine area, and just beyond that is another staircase that kind of leads um, that leads upwards. Um, I would say you guys go ahead and uh, give me some give me some ideas on uh, on what we're doing. Oh, wait a second, just. To wait for the confirmation of, okay, this isn't a ploy that this dragon's playing dead. Yeah. I was going to say, so since Terrence is standing right next to him, I kind of poke him with my sword. <laughs> to make what sure. could possibly you know, go wrong with that? Yeah. I'm going to just go, holy basil, we did it! We did it! We're alive! And nobody died! That was amazing! George drops. Oh, right, the duck. I was about to say, what do you mean nobody died? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> nobody died this time, Devlin. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Not this time. You know what, Devlin? Shut up. Don't ruin this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to scramble down off of the, the statue. Back, Mariel. Well done. Well done. Oh, I had some help. But we can't, all be we can't all be masters at our craft. Um, 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Give her a hug around her legs. Aww. It's a kind way to say master of stupidity, but good on you. <laughs> hey, I'm listen, sorry, I, I can't you. hear you over the sound of the dragon falling to the ground. Ooh. <laughs> oh my. Are we doing vicious mockery right now? I mean, right? <laughs> oh, it's a I'll point. take a level if I have to. Gonna, I mean, I mean, wow. I offer his arm if you need it. Like, do you need help walking? You seem a little frazzled. Which one of us? I think you. Eh, fair point. <laughs> I, Devlin's also kind of dragging I a mean, leg a little bit. He's not... We'll support each other. Let's approach the dragon corpse. I'd like to take the trophy. I'm going to so put my I'm hand on Devlin real fast and cast Cure Wounds with this new ability I've found. I'm going to be almost giddy about it. Oh, my God. Woo! I can actually do <laughs> healing. I'm going to put my hand on you and just boom. Uh, I'm going to do it at uh, fourth level. Nice. Uh, that's going to give you 17 hit points back. Okay. As any of you approach the dragon, Devin will actually just yell out, what? get away. No one gets to touch anything until killing blow gets first dibs. Muriel Devlin. gets first dibs. I think you're probably um. not. Devlin. Um, <laughs> just, just, just for your information, Devlin, I'm already standing here and have been standing here. I'm not moving away. I'm not going to touch it, but so, you can have first dibs on it, but I'm so, just standing here. Terrence, make a make me a dexterity save. Son of a gun. Oh, crap. <laughs> <sighs> ah, okay, here we go. It's a plus two. Let's see. How about a 13? So, 13 does fine. Uh, so, as the dragon has now laid there for several, several minutes, uh, what seems to be almost five weeks long, <laughs> uh, kind of out from out from the body, kind of oozes this this ichor that uh, you know, upon kind of closer, it almost look it almost has the consistency of like a grease. Um, so luckily you're not really moving around much, um, you don't really have any problem finding your footing, uh, under it, so, yeah, you're, uh, you should be alright. Um, I'm gonna take a, can I, I hold out a hand to Devlin and I say, may I borrow a dagger? I imagine yours are much sharper than mine. Any, anything you get, if you want, we've got the bag of holding, so we can put it I in there. Just Opens his cloak. I got several. Which ones you care for? <laughs> like the guy with the Rolex. <laughs> right. He, these are, these are Rolex out. daggers. <laughs> flips I'll hand, just, holds it out, hilt first. Hey, I, uh, thank you. I will kneel and uh, take a scale from the dragon, uh, like heart area, and uh, nothing like huge, nothing ostentatious. But eventually, I'm going to get it mounted with a piece of chain or like a small chain or something and just have a little token um of arguably one of the best moments in my D&D career so um, <laughs> that's that's what I'm going to do and afterwards I'm going to say should we try to strip it for parts can we even get the thing to someone who will buy the parts before they rot um I mean I'm, I'm fairly certain that the <clears throat> excuse me Thank you, Albus. That uh, ooh, that healing shoes, quite good. I imagine the the locals would be quite keen to see a dead dragon. I think they would actually like its skull for their uh, collection. Yeah, That's true. we could do that. Definitely um, want a tooth first, though. I was oh, gonna actually, say, uh, oh yeah, on that oh, yeah. brings up the war pick. <laughs> what kind of trophy are you thinking about, Ganda? <laughs> Bring me yeah, his eyes. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to call dibs on the eyeballs, please. Have at it. All Have right. It. I will go. Do I have to make a roll for them? Um. <laughs> yeah. Make a. Uh, make a nature check. I'll Ooh. guide you. You get a D four additional. Okay. So, just out of curiosity, DM, are there any scales on there that would be big enough for a shield? Um, make a... 16. 
Uh, so with a 16, did you, is that with your guidance as well? That is with the guidance. It was 14 okay. on the die. I... Got it. Um, so go ahead and roll again. You successfully retrieved his right eye. Okay. That's a sixteen on the die. That's that. Guidance. Yeah, you don't I'll even need you, the, you don't need the guidance on that one. You're able to. So you've now plucked both eyeballs uh, from the dragon. Congrats. One for me, one for Ganda. <laughs> he will then step away, and they, I've taken my trophy. So next person can take this. I'll hand you back your blade. Um, no offense, as good as you are with these, I am worse. So. I mean, he still kicks the dead dragon. He did pretty good without one. Um, I'm going to... Uh, Terrence, Raja, you guys can... First, you did w most of the work. Well, If I could get an incisor when you're done, I'd love that. Um, I could probably try to get you an incisor out. Sure. You're, you're good at that. Yeah, go ahead and make a go ahead and make a nature check uh, for that. All right. Um, is that brazier still lit with the dragon dead? By the way, sixteen. It is. And yeah, you're able to uh, you're able to take out the teeth uh, that you're that you're looking for as okay. well. Did you roll, did you roll investigation and I just missed it? No, I did not. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation check for. Uh, scales. Okay, 14. 14. Um, kind of based on what you're seeing, I mean, there's some pretty decent size scales. None of them look like they're really going to be big enough to make a shield. Okay. Uh, if you... Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, could, he, could he pattern some onto his shield? That's... Yeah, that would be... That would certainly be a possibility. Um, if you wanted like, um, to... Leather Leather covered shields are a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking uh dragon scale covered shield would mm. be a thing. That's what I'm kinda of, kinda of going with. Is God, I no, have so a not necessarily that... one to use as a shield, but right. a number could... of them. Yeah. Um to adorn a shield. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh so yeah, so go ahead and make uh we'll do one more nature check, uh, and that's just to see if you can actually kind of carve you off some some scales without twenty one. 21 does it. Um, yeah, so you've definitely, uh, I would say with a 21, uh, you were able to recover uh, 10 usable scales. Wow, okay. And we'll figure it out from there. Um, and, and I'm sure that's going to be more than I need, so. No, I would imagine so. Yeah. Wonder Alvis, if I, can... I have an idea. Um, I know you want your incisor, but have you considered, given your musical proclivities, um, perhaps giving yourself a stretched leather drum? I had not, but I was thinking maybe I could use some of the scales and get uh, or skin and make uh, some leather armor so that I not hit as often. A fire resistant? Maybe. Why do you I think I wanted the scales for my shield? Right. <laughs> I've talked to the locals with their... Abundance of skulls are probably skilled leather workers. I imagine we might be able to work something out. Do we want to go sure investigate that. these stairs? I mean, Big Dagger at least not going anywhere. DM, um, can I roll the check on the ichor that's leaking from this thing? Scores? Yeah, yeah, go for it. What, um, what would you make a make an investigation check. Fifteen total. 15 total. Um, you kind of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to bend luck. Give you a, D, a D4. Oh, thank you, Alvis. Um, let me add a D4. Just a moment. I don't have a table. <laughs> 17 total. 17 total. Um, yeah, you... You kind of... It reminds you of a... It reminds you of Greece, almost. It's just well, we like a... Right? What's that? We already know it's flammable. I would certainly it, hope so, coming out of a red dragon. And it dripped onto the ground before our uh, fight actually started and just spontaneously caught fire. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to, like, gather some 
and I'll talk to Albus about this, given that he's our resident alchemist. Okay. And uh, we'll collect a couple of decent sized like jugs. Mm. Jugs. Like now, if I if I remember correctly, Albus is um you're proficient alchemy. in alchemy. No, just the healer's kit. Just the healer's kit. Okay. Um, uh, for, uh, what am I? Let's just hold on. Herbalism kit. So Herbalism I, kit. Got uh, it. Yeah. Uh, it's not really my cup of tea, but I'm sure we could cobble together something. That's what I'm thinking. Like you've got a leg yeah. up on me in that regard, period. So I mean, let's just play with it a little bit. How yeah, often I do we? I, I want to play. I also want to gather some of its blood. And like I said, just the 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 leather, the skin and scales to try and make some leather uh, leather armor. Okay. Okay. Um, so, just so out of curiosity, are we going to try to ask the uh, the people who are on the island if they can come in and maybe tear this thing apart and get it out of here so that we can get more of it? Because trying to do it ourselves right here may be a little much. We we got to get this dragon out of here so it's not desecrating the temple anymore. Um, I have sending. Mm -hmm. And I am going to, I can use it to cast, uh, I can use it to talk to Trishna, who's the village elder who Erlen uh, appeared with at first. Um, so I can contact her. I've got a spell slot for it. It, um, it just seems to me like getting this dragon out of here is going to be important for all around. Not just for us, but for the whole tribe and everything. Um, and for the temple. Plus, we still haven't... We're taking all this time on the dragon, and we haven't even looked for a horde. Go ahead, Joffrey. Uh, I was just going to say, would it be um, more prudent just to finish clearing out, just to make sure there's nothing else lurking in the background? It was kind of one of my thoughts. Then so. I will resist uh, contacting Trishna until it is time. But so let's, just, yeah, just, let's make sure that we're clear first. <laughs> speaking of there. possible dangers, is there anybody else? I got this new ability. I can actually heal. I'm not just a fire destroyer. I got the ability to help things better <laughs> get better. So anybody needs some healing? Darling, you've been a life giver since the moment we met. Just okay. why, why, why don't you hold... And more the literal, darling. <laughs> why, don't you, <laughs> why don't you hold on to it for now? Albus, and between you and I, we'll keep the group alive if we run into anything else. Well, why don't we just ah, take a doubling. breath and have a 30-minute rest of poop and, like, have a short rest and, like, yeah, gain some HP? I would argue at least clearing before we rest. Unlike ah, that's time. what I'm thinking. I, I agree with Devin. Devin. All right. Okay. Then let us go. Devlin is going to... Uh, put oil and actually activate his hooded lantern so he can now see. Nice. Hey, there you go. At least it's I it's not stealthily, but it's on the off chance that there's nothing else in here, he wants to be able to look around and not feel like he's fighting behind a statue or an entire fight because he can barely see anything. It you is want you wanted me to add some to that, or do you want to be able to control it with your hooded lantern? I'll just, I'll just do the hooded lantern so I can control. Okay, that's fine. I figured I was about to put light on my staff, and I was like, wait a second, we might not want to make like a full beacon. That's At least with this, we can put it down and lit. walk away. Gondor calls for me. Gondor <laughs> calls All right, so <laughs> one of the things is that I... And I'm going to become blind as a bat if I'm not with you, so I better just stay right there. Well, let's move as a group. I imagine the yeah. if there's a bigger threat than a dragon in this cave, we or this temple, we deserve to die. <laughs> um, I'd also like to turn my staff into Tony the Python. Okay. So, you I've neglected time. doing this entire time. Forgot. To be fair, it was probably for the best. Right? It was a rough time. Got all about yeah. Tony the Python. Tony didn't need to see Dang. this. No. Honestly, I feel like Tony would have done great damage against the dragon. What do you mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna, yeah, he would have been able to get in places we couldn't. If Tony dies, <laughs> did the staff turn or did the staff break in half? 
I think if the I think if it will if the durability drops below or if it drops to zero, the staff actually disintegrates, if I remember right. Yeah. I could mm. be wrong. But that's usually how things work. Um well, yeah, I'm gonna be, so um you know, I'm gonna follow the group. So yeah, so kind of real quick, um, so as you're kind of walking for, as you go further and further north into the temple, um, the temperature drastically changes from, um, you know, hot to really hot. Like, super hot. Um, like, how Mariel is it wearing right puberty. there? Like, Mariel hitting puberty. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. I'm done. Yeah, so as you so as you kind of make your I way down, even. there's kind of an archway that you see there in front of you, Terrence, with what looks like maybe a 10 to 15, 20 foot ledge that you're able to walk out onto. Um, okay. Beyond, do do? beyond that, uh, you hear kind of the rumblings of kind of molten lava. As it just kind of runs through. So over to your left, where you see this massive platform that is mm -hmm. being suspended, probably close to about 20 feet above where you're at, by these massive chains that are kind of run from the sides of it all the way out to the edges of this temple. Wow. And holding it. Above that is this massive opening to where you now quickly realize that you're from the temple itself is actually built all the way into the into the volcano of the island. Okay. Um I guess I let whoever can hear me, I let them know that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that they hear what I'm seeing. It looks like and there's actually stairs that will be a bit easier to go up to the platform. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we should go back that way. Um, Do that. And that's my that's my thought. So I, I suggest we go back that way and hit the stairs. What do you guys say? So Raja and Erlon, since I'm controlling them, went ahead and made their way up there. So as as okay. they crest the top stair, they find... A, they find an altar. Now, for the simplicity's sake of the map, um, what I'm about to tell you that is there isn't going to show on the map. We cannot get up to the... Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a door. Oh, that's awesome. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Thank you. To be fair, I don't even know how I did that. That's impressive. <laughs> We're impressed. I think I got everybody. Yeah. Uh, you don't have me yet. Hold on. You do have me, but I don't see anything. It's just black. There's all this. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as you as you kind of hit the top of the stair, um, the walls around you seem to go up, almost as if this is almost a room within itself that has been suspended over this lava. As you're walking through kind of the door arch that would lead, that the stairs would lead up to, um, you make kind of a shocking discovery that it looks like what used to be, what used to be a door is no longer on its hinges. Uh, the door stands roughly about 30 foot tall. Whoa. With the room itself being roughly the same height, maybe a little taller, about maybe 35 feet inside. Um, you're able to see fairly easy. There's a couple of burning braziers in there, but also even just the ambient light from the lava that kind of flows through the back of the, you know, back of the entire complex and up through the central hole itself. And 
I'm gonna have everybody make a perception check. You thought I was gonna say roll for initiative. I saw it. <laughs> I was waiting. I was hoping. Perception. Yeah. Perception. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm on it. I'm pretty sure I'm in the room. Yeah. I had a my seven. Eyeballs, my eyeballs are drying out. From yeah. the heat. Your eyeballs are drying out from the heat. <laughs> oh my 22. god! None of us know what's going on here. <laughs> Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. All right. Uh, and then I need to roll for. I may have to go to regular dice. Raja and. I think I've got Erlen up already. Do I have Erlen? Uh, I do not. Show Aaron, me you should give me a, a, a whole new set of dice. All right. So Raja. Which set you want to borrow? They are widely available. On the... <laughs> or if you get a three D printer, you can take. So Raja got yeah. a sixteen and a fifteen, and Erlen. Rolled a 21, so I think we've got a couple of 21s, if I remember correctly. 23 for Devlin. Okay. Alright, so 23 for Devlin, Amaris with the 22. Yeah, so it's pretty evident that within this room, you find almost, not necessarily bedding but a bedding area from where something massive like super duper duper massive has been laying uh it looks like it is probably months to years that that has been that what that bedding is looks like on the floor mm -hmm. uh and I would definitely say that with the uh, with the rolls, kind of towards the towards the back of the kind of the back of the platform, um, some some glinting shiny things start catching uh, ah. your eyes. Glinty shiny things. Glinty <laughs> shiny <laughs> things. Yes. Those are my favorite things. As they should be. Ask, ask um, anyone. So, uh, I will now have... We're going to have a little fun here. Um, everything is pretty well pretty well laid out. So, as the, as the group kind of makes their way back over um, toward the back of the room, and I'm, and I'm actually going to cut away from the map and just kind of back over into our, our normal portraits for this part here. Um, so, as the group kind of makes their way to the back... Uh, and you kind of start roaming through things. Um, all right, Jesse, here you go, buddy. Mr. Note Taker. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, huh? All right. I sense, I sense an iteration of a partridge in a pear tree. It basically <laughs> is going to be just that. Um, yeah. So. As the group makes its way towards the back and you finally stumble upon perhaps not the largest dragon horde ever found, but large nonetheless. Uh, if you would, please jot this down. Doty, Doty, dot, jot this down. Um, 4,000 platinum pieces. Holy moly. Ooh. Holy moly. <laughs> We're rich. Okay. Uh, 14,000 gold pieces. Ooh. 14,000? 14,000. Uh, Terrence, I think you're getting your castle, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, we can put this in the bag of holding and, and get somewhere safe. And, and no, not, you don't understand. The bag of holding has a weight limit. Right. We can't carry it. Yeah. Uh, and 18,000 silver pieces. You don't know me very well. <laughs> I will break now, my wrist carrying this. With within this massive Scrooge McDuck pile <laughs> of money, <laughs> there are kind of scattered amongst you find there's some different paintings, there's different fabrics, silk if you just want to be exact about it. Um, 
there are there are numerous gems um from from diamonds to opals uh, if you just want to jot down 27 gems we'll figure it out later definitely taking those there are there are a few objects that are kind of interesting looking um there's a flute i wonder who's gonna take that right yeah <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to cast identify on it though. Make sure it's not cursed. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a uh, the conversation. There's a done that. Got t -shirt. Right. There's an there's an urn. An urn. An urn. An urn. Yes. If only uh, we had some ashes of dead loved ones. Right. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of do have a little bit still. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of foreboding and a little bit morbid that we just carry an urn around. Right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> to be fair, yeah. it, your bag of holding an urn. Yeah, it, it worked for <laughs> it worked for Paul Bearer for years. Just saying. Um, <laughs> let me let me identify it before we do before anything like before I ain't we touching anything. The flute. Yeah. What what are we identifying? Nothing yet. I'll do it when we're oh, okay. like. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I'm just saying, um, like, don't like stick anything yeah, yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah. There's a um. There's a map. Okay. And oh. there is a sketchbook. Can I roll a check on the map? Uh, Evelyn's okay. hands already going towards it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if can, so I, uh, can I just really fast cast detect magic? can see what is uh what is magical yes none of the items that you picked up are magical none none okay at all not even the flute, not even the flute. Uh, all right it plays hot cross buns on its own yeah it controls <laughs> rodents those of you who grew up in the 90s with the uh recorder as no it's of choice it's a curse flute it plays another brick in the wall <laughs> yeah there you go um <laughs> So as far as the map goes, if you're wanting to look at the map, just go ahead and do an investigation check. Will do. Uh-huh. I rolled... Actually, I'll tell you what. Either either investigation or survival, whichever one is higher for you. It's hey. definitely investigation. I got. I would like to take a look at sketchbook. Sa soft 20. Okay. I rolled a 15. survival. Yeah. So uh, as you look at the map, you realize that it is basically... A map of where the island is that you're on. Um, huh. Yeah, so it's it's literally just a map of the island. That's still what, useful. Anything does, about uh, it? Devlin, based on his knowledge of the seas and sailing this area, does this start to make sense of... Is this an area he's familiar with, or is this something that's new uncharted seas? per se, or uncharted lands. So from kind of from your sailing days and where you've been, it's probably, for you, it would probably be like a new kind of uncharted area as far north as it is mm -hmm. to where to where your crew probably was more towards the southern portions of either of the continents. Kind of within that shipping lane. Excellent. And no this is exciting. Now, what's the what's the range on detect magic? Uh, detect magic. Hold on, let me pull it up again. I believe it's like uh, thirty feet. Okay, so although the items that you had in your hands weren't magic. Other items kind of within the pile start to glow a little bit. I'll, uh, like, because I'll walk around, make sure I hit the whole room, but I'll point yeah. those out to uh, Devlin and Terrence and Raja. They can so, grab them, because... Uh, I would like to look inside that sketchbook. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so... You see the doodlings of a three-year-old. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, not hard. Um, obviously, you know, there's no locks, nothing like that on it. You're able to open it up, and you start flipping through it. Um, you kind of, with your knowledge, uh, kind of within this group that you represent, you realize as you're flipping through that 
there are various sketches of kind of some smaller dragons, other types of beasts. But as you get towards the back, there is one image that stands out amongst all the others, and it is from the best of your the best of your knowledge and what you're looking at. Uh, it appears to be a an extremely ancient black dragon. Oh. Is this and this is near the back of the sketchbook where it's like newer. Um, is there any writing in the book? There is not any writing in the book. It is strictly just pictures. A picture book. Not, not even like a signature or anything like that. Not that you. Not that you can see. Okay. All right. So, uh, what, all right, what were the uh, magic items that I pointed out that they pulled out? All right. So, uh, I do need everyone like to make a. I do need everyone to make an investigation check for me. 18. Jeez, it's awful. 19. 5. 11. D&D Beyond keeps crashing on me, so... Eight. Well, that's right. Yeah. 15. That's right. And 5. Alright, so... No one above a 20, correct? No. Alright. Uh, give me one second, so... Not unless, uh, not unless Miro guides me. I'll guide you. Oh, that was really nice of you. All right, <laughs> I, got, uh, I have now 23. Hey, there we go. Oh, All right. needs to get so, as you kind of make your way around, Albus, um, you kind of point out some things. Everybody kind of goes to grab some stuff. So, uh, here are your magical items. There is a sword of life stealing. Ooh. I feel like all swords steal life, if you think about it. <laughs> I was just going to say, and that makes it different from other swords, how? <laughs> this on, one's a I'm special just... one. <laughs> go on, go on. There is a rod of the Pact Keeper. There is a gem of seeing. There is a belt of hill giant strength. Oh, I know who's getting that. <laughs> you think it's Raja? <laughs> uh, Albus. I was thinking yeah, Albus. <laughs> uh, there he'll is. The <laughs> there are. And they're in bundles. There's like four bundles that you can see. They are bolts of slaying. Ooh. So for like crossbow? For like a crossbow. I have a crossbow. Hey. I have a crossbow. Look there. <laughs> there is a headband of intellect. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a horn mm -hmm. of blasting. And be glad that Muriel guided you. There is a dragon slayer. <laughs> ooh, ooh, uh, <clears throat> dragon slayer. What sword or it slayer is? Armor? Uh, it is a sword, I believe. I, sword, I I would oh. I would call dibs on that and and the bolts and you can have everything. I mean, we'll split the money and stuff, but the other stuff y'all can. So here is what I would say, uh, just from a uh, from a time crunch perspective, um, I would probably. Put it in the group chat, divvy it out through the week. Tell me what you yeah. guys come up with next week. Money wise, uh, split it as evenly as possible. And. Yep. Guess who's not in the group chat? Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> they'll let Have you fun, they'll Eric. let you know what you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um it takes you it takes you the better part of probably I don't know, I'd probably say four to five hours of hard work to try to get everything into a manageable kind of manageable piles. Um Gold is heavy. Gold is heavy. Um, there is, uh, there is actually one other item that you do find, uh, luckily it is, uh, there is a, now a second bag of holding. Oh, thank God. Mm. Yes. Yay. Um, so you're able to get all of your freshly gotten gains, uh, Bagged up, if you will, for lack of better terms. Do you guys want me to hold the other bag of holding as well? No, let's give that to maybe Raja. I, I was just wondering. I, yeah. We'll I I don't, like it. Yeah, that way yeah. the weight spread between us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That works. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, if you get pickpocketed or something, it would be bad if you had all of them. It's spreading it out gives it more. Yeah, this is true. I mean, they're both rather unpickpocketable, considering one is a gold dragonborn and one is. No, one of them is a little too friendly with people that he doesn't know. That's fair. Again, with <laughs> fan, fan <laughs> points, you really <laughs> work out. Yes. Also, what are we getting out of here? So, oh, um, I figured we could have Amaris help us with that, unless the DM has a piece. Uh, so, the group has kind of finished their. Um, you make your way back down the stairs. Um, I'm assuming that you'll want to send a message yeah. off to whatever. whatever the group deems it uh, prudent. I would probably yeah, so we... say, you know, just from a DM's perspective, yeah. Now, yeah, I, I think at this point you've probably done all you can do, at least from here. Okay. Um. In that case, I will send a message to Trisna. Okay. Um, the doors are still shut, the... right? Yes. Uh, Question, what are the uh, doors made of? Stone. 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 Um, I use mold. I imagine it's, it's a druid, yeah. You probably got yeah. that covered. Yeah, I was just um, wondering. Uh, is there a, any kind of um, crack in the stone at all? Uh, no, the doors are pretty... The doors are still pretty solid. As as crumpled as the temple is, the doors seem like they've held up pretty well. It doesn't seem like something that, that, that uh, Terrence could just go run and smash into it and open it up. I mean, Any... A, you can yeah. certainly try, and I would love to yeah. watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just need a crack. I need a singular uh, I got Mulder. It's pretty good. Um, I will message Trisna and okay. say, um, please come to Temple. Threat has been slain. Adult Red Dragon. All safe. Need help with Skull. Like eight more words. How is Mara? Respond with words. So suddenly, in your mind, you hear, "Oh dear, Where, where's this voice coming from?" Oh yes, we're on our way, dear. Mara is fine. She's fine. <laughs> Imagine she cuts out at. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mara is cuts off. It's probably twenty. <laughs> <laughs> the differing takes up words. Right. <laughs> They're on their way. And Mara just is. <laughs> I I I was watching Jeffrey counting, and all of a sudden he just stopped. <laughs> like, like oh. Because <laughs> you could, it's twenty three out and twenty three in. Twenty five. 25. 25 is the upper limit you could use, but I mean, mm. if you use less, it's not going to like yeah. hurt anything. 
All right. Does anybody want healing? Anybody like in a lot of pain or you guys good I, for now? I could be yeah. better, but I'm also okay as long as we don't engage with anything else uh, until we rest. All right. Oh, you Muriel, what? you have like saved the day today. I'm definitely, I am so excited about this. I'm just going to lay it on everybody. Here. I'm going to cast it. I'm going to give you another uh, hug around the legs, and I'm going to cast it at fifth, uh, fifth level. I'll let you practice on the out. Uh, I love it. I love seeing a new healer. Oh, that's so great. Uh, 24 points of healing. Thank you uh, very much. I'm at 50 out of 66. I am hale and hearty. All right, so, Amaris, how are you getting the group uh, out of the temple? I'm going to use Mold Earth on the doors. Okay. Why don't you, uh, why don't you describe... What you're gonna, what you're gonna do? What's it gonna look like? In so crushing detail, please. The doors, the, do the doors are basically just gonna bend open, just with the, the stone shifting as it as I just wave my hand a little bit, trying to move the stone. Okay. You just watch as these stone doors just shift to the side. Got it. So yeah, so we'll just uh, yeah, they just kind of oh. roll into themselves and just kind of, uh, they kind of part like the Red Sea. Like well, Maris, you need to work on your flair a bit more. I mean, obviously that was spectacular, but could you make it just a tiny bit more dramatic? In that case, I'm just going to do it again and just flip them back and then just shove them forward. There <laughs> you go. There you go. Yeah. The boy learned how to Please. use the force. Right? Please tell me I didn't accidentally hit someone who was outside coming in. <laughs> 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 yeah, as you walk out, yeah, uh, Trista, Trista and Mara lay on the ground, knocked out. No, I'm kidding. That would be that would actually be pretty funny. I pull out the urn. Just, the urn just now. Now's the time. Yeah. All right. I'm so to the, like, uh, I'm going to be marching towards the village because I am done with that. I'm oh, yeah. So done. I'm just so grateful to breathe fresh air again. That dank, dragonic smelling cesspool is just mm -hmm. I need a bath. So, Anyone else need no. a bath? So I'm going to yeah, ask I'm uh, Tristan. I'm going to ask Tristan now, is there a place that we can just kind of clean up and go to sleep for a little while? Because we're a little tired at the moment. Before we tell you what happened. <laughs> we haven't gotten tired. Time. Okay. Um, the entire red dragon that needs to be brought out and disassembled. <laughs> they could do that while we sleep. Right. <laughs> For sure. Good point. And we did the work. So I would say, yeah, so at this point, the group has, you know, taken probably the, it's probably a couple hour walk. Um, as you, as you leave the temple... The wind is very unnaturally heavy. It's blowing through, it's just ripping through the jungle of this island, throwing trees, not uprooting them, but it, it's, it's bending them kind of that stress point, where if it got any higher, style. it would certainly be quite interesting. Um... What'd there's, you do with the window, Mara? There's also just this nasty, foul smell that regardless of where you go, they, it just, it doesn't seem to dissipate. Um, so the group makes its way back into the, you know, the village proper, if you will. And you've kind of made your way over to where the camp, you know, the central kind of bonfire camp area. And shortly after arriving, uh, the, you know, villagers begin to come out and greet you all. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Trista comes out. Erlen kind of leaves kind of the group and walks up and begins to kind of conversate back and forth uh, before you guys are approached by Trista. Um, so as Trista approaches, uh, Muriel, she looks just directly at you first 
And she's like, my dear, that was uh, that, that was quite a trick you did in my head. I didn't know where this voice came from. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't even think to introduce myself. I assumed you would figure it out. I figured it'd have to be you or, or one of you. Yes, absolutely. Well, I apologize for startling you regardless. Oh, it's no worry, dear. No worry at all. Um, I would but probably no say worries. give us a day or so and we'll have your dragon drug out and, well, we'll decorate around here with it. We've so already wrong. taken what we desire from the body. I, I believe the group would agree with me. The rest is yours. What do you have, Devlin? A piece. Uh, oh, yes, a couple of pieces we need still. This, uh, this weather, um, how long yes. has this been going on? Uh, I would. Devlin to see fair. Cha sudden changes in the weather is never good. So he's just trying to get a sense of a timeline of the weather before he starts making checks in his head. So she explains to you that the weather began probably at this point. Um, I'm gonna call it 18 hours only because I didn't jot everything down. Um, kind of thinking through it a little bit more, you realize that that was shortly after the dragon died. Mm. Wait, we've long rested? Uh, no, you've act you've been working. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. We rested all. What's that? I know what this means, but I... Would I know what this means? Because I do have a theory for this. Um, go ahead and tell me your theory, because if it's anything kind of about what we talked about before you actually started, yeah. then yes, go for it. Has we killed the dragon that this happened to the, the disturbance in nature? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and kind of explain to the group uh, what you're talking about. As I told you before with the dragon egg that you showed me, the dragon, right after we killed it, it created another disturbance in nature. All of nature's felt this. Sorcerers and magicians are becoming from far and wide now, trying to pinpoint where this is. Oh no. So we what's that mean island. for us? We've opened this island up to predation. However, if the gold dragon left an egg, it's possible the red one did. Where would that be? No idea. I look at that and say, I'm gonna need a bigger knife. Uh, 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 Omeris, a uh, question. Um, I'm still thinking of ancient sea dragon in the brain, just kind of how long after a, let's say in this hypothetical real life, uh, a dragon dies, how long before a dragon egg materializes? Is it instantaneous? Is it in the sight of death? Or is it in a other location? Um, that is still hypothesized. I believe it just goes into a just the energy transfers to an egg make, where the egg is make a make a history check for me oh okay. bears okay nine okay um with a nine you've heard you've heard rumors that dragon eggs appear you're not sure when, you're not sure necessarily where. Um, I would probably say based off the fact that as the group made it to the island and understanding that there was previously another dragon on the island that had passed away and there was an egg that was produced that you can, the group can definitely surmise that chances are there is an egg from this red dragon that you killed. Does that mean that there's a bunch of eggs from all the other dragons that were killed by the red dragon? I would think there'd have to be. Question is where? In his mind, Devlin's going to try to reach out to Yorg Mangander. Gander, this is going to be like a weird one, but... When a dragon dies, regardless, we, we killed the red dragon. Huzzah, we all lived. You still have your <laughs> you still have your sword, but where would the essence of the dragon toward its egg, where would it go? 
Is it somewhere close? Is it somewhere specific? Is there a ritual or order to the creation of a dragon egg? In, in his mind, he's going, okay, let me talk to an actual dragon, see if he can offer any insight, if there is any to be gained. If he, if he will. <laughs> if he will, exactly. So, let's roll for this. <laughs> that was ominous. <laughs> it did come out a bit more ominous than uh, than what I was uh, what I was aiming for. Um, okay, so no, it... to to save uh, to save my voice and my throat. Uh, Norman Gander does respond to you. Um, he responds in one word. All he says is inside. I told you I'm going to need a bigger knife. You're going to yes, help as always, Norman Gander. Thank you. Um, my dragon patron says inside. I asked I'm the. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. Um, it doesn't give any clarity, just inside. That could be I'm inside. betting inside the body. Or the shrine. No, actually, I was shrine. thinking the shrine, or, or the place where the dragon mm -hmm. originated. Or, I so have... we have the... some searching to do. Yeah. We still have to find... It's been a really long day, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. And time, if we look at the weather, is now against us. Yeah, we still need to sleep. We, we can't just sleep. go. I know, I'm just saying, whatever mm -hmm. such were about to take place is going to need to be... Soon. Quite. Mm-hmm. Well, we can't do anything right now. Most of us are spent. Also, yeah. Trishna, is my boat still afloat? <laughs> oh, is that it for me? Yes, yeah. the The boat is still afloat, somewhat. It's not a It's not a smoking husk from where I left the beaker over the Bunsen burner. Right. Uh, nah. <laughs> I remember you did it in a bucket, like or over water. So oh. I I put measures in place. <laughs> I don't understand. What's up? How's Mara? Is she awake yet? Yeah. Can we pop in on Mara? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so as the group pops in, um, you just, you find Mara peacefully resting, uh, in one of the tents. Um, she is, from what you can tell, uh, she's not wearing her usual kimono. She's actually kind of dressed in, like, very similar clothing to what you see the people in this village wearing. Where is her kimono? Either way. It's just it's just folded and over kind of off to the side. Okay. She's not She's awake. awake. Not awake, not okay. awake. I was referring right. to Lady in Pink, but now she's just Lady. A lady. Lady in, lady in beige. The lady in waiting. Parents <laughs> looks over at Devlin. I have a feeling your accent's gonna wear off on me. <laughs> is that supposed to be a compliment? Because I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already I fighting think. the assimilation accent. Yeah. <laughs> Strong I'm, accent. Um, I'm going to go up to the elder and I'm going to ask, um, uh, I'm going to be like, uh, is your people do like leather work or uh, I see all the skulls uh, with the dragon. Some of us were wondering if you guys might be able to craft some of the skin and scales into stuff we could use. Um, would that be something you'd be willing to do? Maybe we can pay you for it or trade you for it. Make a make a persuasion check. Um, and I would say make it with advantage. I would say, like, we just killed a friggin' dragon right. for it. Who <laughs> are you? That was going an adult to red dragon. At that. We just killed an adult red dragon. Devlin's starting to see some flair he could add to his outfit. Oh, advantage, advantage. Woo. I got a natural one. Uh, and a, well, not great. Uh, and a 12. And a 12. Um, 11. 
Credits. So, so, so yeah. Uh, so she, I'd say even with the twelve, so she just kind of responds back. I mean, unless you're talking like a nat twenty or something, um, and she's. She explains that yes, um, they do indeed do leather work. She just kind of she kind of giggles and points around and just kind of points at the tents, which, as you look closer, um, appears to be like a lot of <laughs> a lot of leather, a lot of cloth. Um, Animal skin. So she said, you know, she definitely says that yes, they can uh, they can certainly try to salvage as much of the the dragon as they possibly can, and probably be able to make. A few pieces of uh, of gear from it, uh, but at a cost, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm feeling like we can afford it now. So yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll tell her what I it want. Be a little right, just a I'll smidge. I'll tell her what I want. Just the uh, I'm hoping for, and I would like it, it to be kind of like leather armor, but with the red dragon scales still attached. So. Um, with some, uh, with some of the uh, teeth, kind of come down the sides, like that'll go really well with the with the like helmet, a, like black, like Black Panther, with he's got it like a necklace, right? I was thinking more like it would look. It's yeah, it's it's kind of to outline. It's kind of to outline, kind of the outline the, mm -hmm. the body and chest and whatnot, just a, as an accent of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, gotcha. All right. Um, All right. And when he does that, I'm going to ask if they can take my shield and give them the scales and ask them if they can fabricate the scales over the shield so that it has the uh, dragon scales on it. Mm -hmm. If that's within their abilities. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she takes your shield, kind of puts it over the side, and yeah, just assures you that they'll get it done. They'll send you the bill. Yeah. Uh, what kind of time? Uh, I'll clarify. Like, what kind of timing are we looking at? Like, are we going to need to go and come back? And I don't know when we're leaving because it depends on Mara and what else. I guess we have to search the temple still. Well, she's what from a from a time from a time standpoint for them to break down the dragon, um, kind of get the material ready to be used. It's probably it, I'd probably say it'd probably take them the better part of two to three days. Uh, to get what you would be needing. Uh, Terrence, that would include your shield as well. Um, Evelyn would want just a small thing. He would want the shoulder, almost like a, the shoulder piece of his cloak, his outfit, mm -hmm. adorned in red scales. In his mind is, no, 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 no. I'm going to get a pirate trophy out of this that's just going to boost my reputation potentially of like right. someone sees me. I got red scales on my yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah no I like it uh yeah I didn't buy these <laughs> yeah I just would just like to get a dagger made out of one of the horns what's that I'm sorry I might just like to ask them if they can like make one of the horns into like a dagger okay alright uh so yeah that uh that certainly shouldn't be a problem um, so you, I would say at this point, uh, the group can go ahead and, uh, bed for the evening, probably sleep in very well the next day, uh, <laughs> so go ahead and do your, go ahead and do oh. your long rest. Um, like, well, I'm guessing, so did they give us, like, individual, like, spots, or... Were we able to all like kind of like bed down? Uh, my thought is I want to kind of be close to Mara and make sure she's good. No mm. one's sleeping on his boat. He's okay. just going to go spend the night on the boat. Just <sighs> got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, which isn't a problem. Um, so yeah, you're definitely able to. Albus, like yeah, Albus, you're you go into the tent where Mar is. Uh, I would probably say is a few a few more of you could yeah. fit in there. It's I just got the info one of my too. players. It's crashing for them as well. Um, and I'll yeah. I'll spend the uh, the website itself is down. Yeah, yeah. Roll twenty. Yeah, roll twenty is down, which is kind of interesting. Okay. I won't. I'm not roll twenty, but uh, D and D Beyond. D and D Beyond. 
Well, that's okay. Um, we can. We know what we're gonna do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we definitely don't need it from from this perspective. Yeah. Um. So as oh, you guys, man. as you kind of go your separate way for the evening, um, you. I would say for the for the sake of it, um, Albus and Muriel both head to the tent that Mara's in. Um, Terrence, Raja, you guys kind of head off to one of the other tents that Trista has, you know, said, "Hey, use that for use that for your quarters." Devlin, uh, you've made your way. Back to the boat, and uh, Omeris not necessarily wanting to stay in a tent. Um, you kind of go kind of off, not necessarily like leaving the village proper, but just far enough like into the into the rainforest itself that you're you know kind of just back amongst um, nature, if you will. Yeah, everyone roll initiative. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, squirrels are arriving. I'll spend, Let's fight the squirrels now. I'll spend a couple of hours, I'm sure me and Muriel, just kind of talking to Mara's unconscious self, telling her all about what happened, and, you know, I'll be like, and you should have seen it. Muriel was so cool. Like, she just, she had these black tendrils, like, wrapped around it, and she whipped them, like, just, <laughs> like, all, like, more animated and more excited than he's ever been since this whole thing started. Uh, like talking about his healing and being able, like, I figured it out. I can do it. Like, I'm not just destruction anymore. And then, yeah, just, yeah. Muriel is sitting with Mara's head in her lap and brushing and uh, smiling and listening to Albus, you know, yeah rattle on as he does because it's adorable and she loves him for it um yep. and i'll and i'll accompany it with like full like poses and gestures like full like oh, interpretive yeah. dance <laughs> a little bit of it's music like every, it's like every halfling or kinder i've ever seen right <laughs> or read about i um when there's a break in the story and Albus draws a breath, I'm gonna murmur down to her sleeping face and say, you'd better come back soon, my dear. It's not the same without you. You and I have things to discuss and I'll be honest, they're eating away inside of me. I need to know if you're all right. Two. I, I do too. I need to come back. For Can I um do the psychic thing again where I like gently probe her mind to see what her state is? You can. Okay, I I don't have D and D beyond. That's, yeah, that's right. Do. You don't. That's right. No, um, no you can't. I, I roll the spell, I do the thing. What, what? Yeah. I roll the spell, I do the thing. Um, oh shoot, I don't remember First if that's a... Thing. I don't remember if that's a saving throw for her, or if it's just a... Not at Super first. Game. If I'm just gently feeling along the Yeah, heart, yeah, fair enough. Um, there's, there's no save. So, as you're... As you close your eyes, you open your eyes again... Alba sees your eyes completely black. Pupil dilated to the point to where all you see in your eyes is just just a blackness. Um, oh. A dead stare of the darkest night, the blackest black that you've seen. Normally my eyes are silver, so that's a wild change. Yes, it is. Yeah, but I've seen it before, so I'm not as freaked out. Um, is this normal for the spell? It is. It doesn't sound like it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Right, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Was I supposed it's to run into Right. <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> they trapped Mara's brain! As 
As you gently probe into her mind, you find yourself in the familiar... the familiar space from where the psyche of Muriel fought the psyche of Dark Mara. But there's no one there. It's just you. You're alone. So, uh, to me, that is a cause for concern. Because if Mara's consciousness is not in her mind, where is it? Indeed. <laughs> um... So that was a spell I used to get in her brain. Mm -hmm. But I have psychic ability that allows me to communicate over great distances. That's a class ability. Mm -hmm. That's an aberrant mind. Can I utilize that here and try to see if it can amplify the effects by doing it in her mind? Seeing as I've already utilize the amplification of her of doing spells in her brain to perform other acts to help her roll a do you have your dice you don't have any dice with you at all do you I ain't got jack I'm well, afraid that, to roll for somebody else well that do, certainly uh, makes sense I'll, I can do um I can do there's there's google dice like I don't yeah, I have dice, dice. Roll a roll a d twenty with a DC of fifteen. Nope, I rolled a two. You rolled a what? A two. A two. Um. Yeah. So with uh, with a two, as as much as you, as hard as you try. As much as you push and push and push, um, you get nothing. Still kind of in this void. The void of Mara's mind. Um, Deeply concerns me. Um, I'm gonna, like, this 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 concerns Muriel to the point where she's agitated, and I kind of like do, I I pace like tense and tight for just a few moments in this space. It's it may be well trodden territory for me, but I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting the information I want out of this endeavor, mm -hmm. and I am. It frustrates her because there's nothing that frustrates Muriel more than a mystery she cannot unwrap. Um. And at a certain point, she's going to realize that she's been muttering, not to herself, and not to Mara, but to something outside of herself. And she realizes for probably the second time in her life, she's actually talking to Terrence's God. Okay. And... It's almost unconscious, because if you believe such a being exists, you would talk to them. And she's kind of, like, frustrated to the point where she's, like, kind of a little bit belligerent and saying, why would you bring me this far? Why would you allow me to do this to my friend? Why would you allow her to go to these lengths to try to fix herself and then not, not follow through, not finish the job. What are you doing? And why won't you let me in on it? If I knew what you were doing, I would help. If I knew what needed to be done, I would do it. But you won't talk to me. So you hear no response. But in the in what you think is the distance, because you have to remember kind of where you're at. You're 
picture kind of this dome-ish area. We've discussed what it looks like before. This um, distant horizon. Yes. In this in this distant horizon, um, breaking through breaking through the clouds that kind of continually flow over this dome area. You see this magnificent light. A light that rips through this darkness. And for the briefest moment, even though you're only there mentally, telepathically, however you want to put it, Body. you feel... You feel an overwhelming happiness. You feel... For some reason, you know that your body feels warmth. And... At that point, you... The connection breaks. I drop unceremoniously back into my physical form. As your eyes roll back to their normal silver coloring albus noticing this fairly quickly um you can't help but to smile and as you as you smile for the briefest of seconds and it could just be that maybe both of you are so tired and delirious that you're seeing things mara's eyes open she smiles and immediately falls back unconscious. I look at Albus. What was that? Albus, I'm afraid. Because I went to her mind. She's not there. You mean? I mean, the presence of Mara is not in this skull anymore. And I don't know where it is. I don't even know where to begin to look for it. What have I done? Just reach out and I'll grab your hand. Just squeeze, grab Mara's hand and squeeze it too. Figure it out. What we have to do, we have to figure it out. What if there's no answer to all this? What if they just killed my friend? Our friend? Oh no. Squeeze your hand a little bit harder. I'm gonna squeeze back. So. As we, as Albus and Muriel continue to probably chat for, I would imagine, a little longer, eventually falling asleep. Um, I would definitely fall asleep close to Mara. Yeah. Uh, like we would be, like, hanging in our hammocks in the girls' quarters on the ship. Yeah. Um... Raja is fairly quick to hit his bed when he gets to the tent uh, and is out like a stone. Uh, Erlen has since retired to his back to his humble abode. Terrence. As you lay 
kind of drifting in and out. Probably praying while, you know, I would probably lay down and start praying. Um, so drifting in and out while I'm praying. So if you pray anything like I do um, in real life, uh, <laughs> if you're praying to yourself, you start yawning. I don't know if anyone else yeah. does that. Yeah. Yes. yes. Ah, I yep, love it. That's exactly what I was thinking. I love it so much that, yeah. Try, trying so hard to have a connection and, and a talk. and. All you're doing is... Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Right. <laughs> oh, thank you for this day. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So yeah, so as uh you know, you're having you're having these prayers um kind of slowly starting to drift in and out and as you eventually kind of succumb to your tiredness um there is a You find yourself in a forest, not necessarily the forest of this island, but a forest that you're very, fairly familiar with. Um, as you as you take a minute to really kind of gather your kind of gather your bearings, if you will. Um, you realize fairly quickly that it's the the forest outside of your of your home city. Okay. And the more you look around, the more familiar it gets. You're starting. You're literally the point where you're you're recognizing trees. You've <laughs> you've run past this tree so many times that there's. You know, there's like a specific hand mark on that tree from where you've rubbed it, running by it so many times. Um, okay. You see images of a younger Terrence um, running through, running through the forest, um, stick and bark in hand. You know, <laughs> yes, yeah, just, you know, playing this, this chivalrous night, and it's, it's certainly a, it's just, it's such a great feeling. Um, if anyone was standing in your tent with you, they could just, they could watch you sleep, and you're just, like, smiling and laughing in your sleep, uh, which, yeah, according to some people in my home, I do. <laughs> so do I. Uh, <laughs> um, suddenly, in your dream, the trees go away. You still see your child self, but there is a, for the slightest of moments, there is kind of a darkness that sets in over. Kind of this dreamscape. And as it as it pushes in, it 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 comes in like a fog. Um so it's not a fog to where you can see through, but almost like this creeping darkness that's pushing in closer and closer and more constricting and more constricting. And as it gets close much like what with Muriel saw in her own vision this radiant awesome light bursts through that darkness not only engulfing you but it, it begins to engulf many Terrence if you will and as you kind of rear back a bit just with the brightness of this light and you turn to look for your former young self, um, 
there's a there's a being of light that stands there next to you. It's shapeless. Well, it is a human shape, so I can't spell it shapeless. Um, it has no face. Um, does take the shape of a man. And he begins to ask you a series of questions. It says Terrence Paladin from the land of Namar. Do you promise to uphold the light? With all of my heart. Terrence, the Paladin. From Numar. Will you be willing to lead others to this light? With everything in me. So be it. And as you as you finally hit the probably the deepest sleep that you have had. The images from within kind of vanish. You're just you're now in a deep sleep. Albus. As you Ill. as you lay down finally rearing from the day that you've had. You have visions and dreams of a long-departed brother. Except this time, this brother... Is smiling and happy. And for the faintest moment, you hear his familiar voice. And he leaves you with the words Mom and Dad would be proud. As you doze off, his figure fades away. Amaris, as you sit amongst your squirrel friends, <laughs> I trust these squirrels aren't friendly. A familiar voice comes to your mind. Amaris, have you learned anything? I have. I have indeed learned a few things. Then I believe your mission is complete. I believe it is time for you to return to the circle. As you command. And as, as you mutter those words, you feel almost a slight tickle in your brain, like you know that that connection has been severed. Devlin, as you finally make it back to your ship, there's no better feeling in the world than being off of the ground that doesn't move. You're back on... You're back on the planks, the rocking... The constant sound of waves breaking against the boat. 
You do a quick dives into the water and just floats there, just in that kind of in his usual ways, either underneath the boat, just holding on, but just letting the water just engulf him and just letting that stillness of the pressure wash away his worry, wash away whatever he's thinking, and just settles in the water. I would say, and you're the only one that I'm going to make do it, but since you're down underneath the boat, why don't you do like a, why don't you do a survival check to make sure there's no holes in it? <laughs> 14. Uh, yeah, you're, you're good. You can definitely see as you go underneath that there is like this small bulge underneath where it looks like <laughs> the big body of something was slammed through the bottom of the boat. I'm not going to call any names, but Terrence, you left a just the, this massive dent in his boat. Sleeps Mark everywhere he goes. Tomorrow's problem? Devlin's not going to let it <laughs> face him. He's just going to push it from his mind, just let the water calm him down <laughs> before he'll go back up. To the this is kind of his, his, his meditation as he goes into the water, just lets it just center him <laughs> so as you as you spend time in the water eventually making your way back onto the boat into your captain's quarters and lay down for the evening like all of your compatriots one might even see one might even say friends almost You, sl you slowly slip away into sleep. But your sleep is like the rest of your friends. There's definitely something there. And as you... As you start nodding off, you find yourself back in the water again. It's not a deep water. It's fairly shallow. And 20, 30 feet in front of you is a set of rocks that kind of jag out of this water. Fairly flat enough to where you could walk up them, kind of overlooking the area. So as you make your way over, you get on these rocks and begin to climb. As you near the edge, suddenly that very familiar wind that you have felt being on the island itself kind of picks back up. The sea begins to surge, which leads to the sea turning into this whirlpool vortex, if you will, kind of right in front of these stones. And as you watch, very, very familiar figure of this massive sea dragon comes out of the water. Head kind of craning up and just kind of looks down at you as it towers above you 50, 60, 70 feet. You've done very well. Find the eggs. Find them all. Bring them to me. And as the last words are muttered, this head cranes back, dips down into the vortex, and you're jostled from your sleep, waking up just long enough to realize that your 
the entirety, the cabin of your captain's quarters is completely soaked with seawater. Is the ship... Oh no, the ship's completely fine. No holes, no nothing. <laughs> just the inside of your room. Oh, it's just damp. It's just damp, yeah. It's like someone came in with like for breeze and went pss, 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 <laughs> on everything. Ocean spray. Ocean spray, that's right. Um and never bothered me anyway. That's exactly where we're gonna end the night. Wow. So, uh, hey, if you watched, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been awesome being back. Um, yep. Yeah, sorry about the late start. We had some things that we wanted to discuss before we got things kicked off. Hopefully, uh, we will see uh, Mara or Erlen and uh, Raja join us next week. Uh, until then, have a fantastic week. God bless. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.